Watching a horror movie is one thing. You may have spent many an evening home alone watching reruns of Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds on VHS. It's raining outside, nearly midnight, and you get that strange lingering feeling in your gut that something's not quite right. Of course, it's just the residue of horror cinema doing its job. Your mind's still affected by the simulation of fear. But while watching a horror movie is one thing, filming one is an entirely different story. Whether it's hours of arduous takes, strained emotions, and rising tensions between actors and director, or something slightly more unexplainable, perhaps even paranormal. The history of horror cinema is rife with strange, bizarre happenings that cast and crew were less than willing to address. Of course, it's just a faulty camera, right? Or an old lighting rig? Wow. Maybe there's something a little bit more to it. Hello horror fans and welcome back to the Scariest Channel on YouTube Top 5 Scary Videos. As always, I'll be your horror host Jack Finch, as today we whir up the dusty old camera and curiously take a look at the Top 5 Haunted Horror Movie Sets. Roll the clip. For those of you that don't know, that clip was from 1982's Poltergeist, and yes, those were real skeletons bobbing around with Jo Beth Williams, and she wasn't happy about it to say the least. The lengths that Toby Hooper would go to get a genuinely terrifying reaction are staggering, and Poltergeist could take up an entire five point list of its own. Regardless, Let's jump on it. Kicking off at number five, The Omen, 1976. Perhaps one of the most notoriously nefarious film shoots in horror cinema, The Omen, the 1976 horror masterpiece by Richard Donner, which is a widely accepted fact that the set was cursed by an evil being that followed the cast and crew between October 1975 and January 1976, and even after filming was wrapped. The bizarre experience began with the way that the animals were reacting on set. On multiple occasions, highly trained dogs used in the film went wild and attacked their trainers, after the infamous baboon scene with Lee Remick, which was filmed on location at a safari park, an animal handler was eaten alive the day after the crew finished filming. On several separate occasions, a faulty camera used to film shots revealed that, allegedly, the devil was nearby by flashing a message that read Error 666. That should be explainable, right? It's just a coincidence? Well, technicians soon found that Error 666 didn't exist as a message number. It wasn't even programmed into the device. However, the most infamously creepy incident occurred after filming had wrapped on Friday the 13th of all days. John Richardson, the set designer responsible for the infamous decapitation scene, was involved in a tragic head-on car crash with his assistant while working on a bridge too far on location in Holland. Gruesomely, the assistant was sliced in half, just as Richardson had created in the film scene. Even weirder, according to Richardson, a road sign just away ahead of the collision read that the town of Omen, with two M's, was 66.6 kilometers away. Coming in next at number four, The Innkeepers, 2011. The House of the Devil, the awesome 2009 pastiche horror flick by Ty West, gave rise to the idea behind his next film, 2011's The Innkeepers. During filming for The House of the Devil, the crew stayed in a hotel named Yankee Peddler Inn, allegedly one of the most haunted locations in Connecticut, and witnessed a campaign of paranormal activity, doors closing by themselves, TVs turning on and off, and lights burning out constantly. Ty West West claimed that everyone on the crew had extremely vivid dreams every night, as if in some strange way the hotel itself was whispering to them. Well, his experience was so terrifying that it created 2011's The Innkeepers, and of course, to film it, they headed back to the haunted Yankee Peddler Inn, where the vast majority of the film was shot on location. As Ty West himself claimed, as soon as they spent their first evening back at the hotel, the vivid dreams began once again. Cast and crew reported hearing whispers in their bedroom at night, and an onslaught of paranormal phenomena had the crew concerned. On one particular night, the lead actor Sarah Paxton woke up in her hotel room in the middle of the night, screaming, claiming that someone or something had sat on her bed while she slept. Disconcerting. Swinging in at number three, The Possession 2012. 2012's The Possession, directed by Ole Bollendahl, isn't the greatest of horror flicks by any means, but it does have one of the most bizarre series of events in cinematic history that occurred during filming. In theory, the film was 
was based on true events and the plot focused on a young girl who was possessed by an evil spirit living inside a Dibok box, an ancient Judaic container for evil spirits. Well, the real object that was used as a prop was a wine cabinet several hundred years old that had been surrounded by decades of strange phenomena. You think they'd have just built a new one. During scenes that involved the box, actor Jeffrey Dean Morgan recalled a number of eerie phenomena. Lights would explode all of a sudden and there would be bizarre gusts of cold air from otherwise controlled scenes. Days after shooting a wrapped of the possession, a mysterious fire started in the warehouse where all of the film's props were being stored in case of reshoots. The mysterious fire destroyed everything, including the strange eerie wine cabinet that had been used as a replica Dibbuk box. No trace of arson or electrical fire was ever discovered, so what do you think? Demon? Yeah, it was a demon. Next up at number two. The Exorcist 1973. While it may be one of the most terrifying films ever made in horror cinema, it's a pretty well known fact that the set of 1973's The Exorcist was haunted by an actual demon, not just Reagan McNeil. The first paranormal hiccup occurred when shooting for the whole film was delayed because the entire set used for the McNeil home mysteriously caught on fire and burned to the ground. However, of course, the one room that remained completely untouched by the fire was Reagan's demonic bedroom. The explanation? The fire was said to be caused by a deranged pigeon that somehow got through to a secure circuit box and blew the whole thing up. Director William Friedkin called it a winged demon with talons, so anyone's guess. Again during filming, Ellen Burstyn who played Chris McNeil, Reagan's mother, had her harness randomly break when the possessed Linda Blair threw her to the ground. The take was actually used in the film and her scream in the movie is actually genuine, but production staff could find no explanation for the accident. In total, nine cast and crew deaths are associated with the film and the strange incidents continued to occur after the film's release. During its premiere in Rome, a bizarre lightning strike struck a 400 year old cross on top of a neighbouring church. It seemed that something was still angry. And finally our number one spot, Rosemary's Baby, 1968. As William Castle, the producer attached to this film once said, the story of Rosemary's Baby was happening in real life. Witches, all of them, were casting their spell and I was becoming one of the principal players. The horror classic directed by Roman Polanski is one of the most controversial horror movies ever made and is notorious for its series of unfortunate events both on and off set. For those of you that haven't seen it, Rosemary's Baby tells the story of Rosemary Woodhouse, a woman who is convinced that an evil cult wants to take her baby for a ritual because turns out the baby is the son of Satan. While it did turn out what happened off screen was eerily similar. In one of the most tragic and brutal cases in Hollywood history, a year after the movie was released, Roman Polanski's wife Sharon Tate was murdered by members of the Manson family, the ritualistic murder cult led by Charles Manson himself. Tate was eight months pregnant and was stabbed 16 times. Soon afterwards, William Castle began receiving death threats, claiming that he had unleashed evil evil by making his movie. Days later, he was taken to hospital due to kidney failure. As he was being admitted, he yelled out, Rosemary, for God's sake, drop the knife. Later, William Castle died of a heart attack. Rosemary's Baby is one of the most notorious horror movie shoots of all time and the events that unfolded are shrouded in the same bizarre paranormal mystery. We'll never know. Well there we have it horror fans, our list for the top 5 haunted horror movie sets. Let us know your picks in the comment box down below. Before we depart, let's take a look at some of your more creative comments from over the past few days. DarkSideX20 says, can we get a top 5 scariest haunted places where you actually visit them? Please. Ah. Oh my word, Darkside X20, I would like nothing more than exactly that. Make sure you spam our channel and see if we can get some location shoots going. I could do a tour of haunted buildings across North America. Living the dream. Arcady20 says, Dear Jack, what's your least favourite monster from the Lovecraft mythos? Love to the top five team. Well, much love to you, Arcady20, but do you mean least favourite as in the lamest or least favourite as in the scariest? All of the creations in the Lovecraft mythos are awesome, but the lamest as in the worst death would be Bug Shash, just a massive of slime and eyes that controls people like puppets. I don't want to go like that. Scariest would be Naya Lathotep. Enough said, spooky guy. Well, unfortunately, folks, that's all we've got time for in today's video. Just sticking around all the way until the end. If you're a fan of this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, ding that subscribe button, and we'll be seeing you in the next one. As always, I've been your host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos, and until next time, you take it easy.